Now we're going to braze using the turbo torch, but we're going to braze dissimilar metals. So we're going to use three different types of brazing rods. We have the 4555, all right? And then we also have the nice sill, which is not the best with the turbo torch for dissimilar metals. The, the heat doesn't really work right. And then we got our standard one, our 8515 Silfos. So all these, if you look in the Harris product book, uh, this one here is going to melt and flow at about 1225 to 1370 so it's going to melt at 1225 and then it'll go flow it'll go liquidous at 1370 so that's how hot we got to get the project to so that's a little bit different than the other brazen rods that we're dealing with and we're going to be using this white brazing flux which is active up to about 1600 degrees fahrenheit now this is a little bit different flux than the solder and paste that we use with soft soldering this flux is a water-based flux and it's for brazing only so if it tends to dry out all you got to do is add a little bit of water and it'll, uh, it'll get liquidous again for you to use. Now the flux has got some characteristics. If you take a look here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get up to 212 where the water boils out of the flux and then the flux itself will bubble. It looks like it begins to melt, sort of turns like it's popcorn, looks like popcorn on the pipe, but when it gets clear, that's when we're getting to our brazing temperature. So it'll go clear as glass at right about 1100 degrees and then somewhere between 11 and 1500 degrees is where we're gonna do our actual brazing process. You got to use the flux in order for it to stick. The pipe won't stick, the solder won't stick if you're not using the flux. So we're going to go ahead and put a little bit of flux around the steel pipe and then I'll insert it into my copper tubing. And first we're going to use the 4555. So we'll move all our paper out of the way, get my little bit out of here. Torch is on full steam, heat up the pipe first. Watch the flux, turn it to popcorn, water boil it out, turn the popcorn. When it goes clear as glass, I'm good to go. And I'm trying to make sure the heat temperature of the pipe doesn't get cherry red. It'll be close, and then I can put a little piece on to let me know like a tattletail when we got to our melt and our flow point. You can see melt, that's like a melt, and then when it flows, you get that capillary action. So if you start, there's the flow right there. Flow. And that's it, all the way around. So that's that for that one. Now that's not all of it. We're gonna do another one here. I'll cool this down. Normally let that cool naturally, but you can see it has that nice gold color, right? And we don't have too much discoloration on the, on the copper tubing. With this rod here, so here's the one that we just did, just like that one. This one here, it's gonna burn it up. Both sides are gonna be burned up for this brazen rod here. It's just not the best one to use, but we're gonna go ahead and use it try it show it to you so this is the nice sill whereas this one had 45 percent silver and uh, some other elements of copper and zinc but mostly silver and copper 45 55 this one's nickel and silver so we're going to go ahead put the nickel in but watch how hot this one's got to get this is going to get cherry red right here before i go even start to melt this one also has flux here i didn't even really need to flux it but it's gonna, it just helps it out. Cause some of the flux is off the tip. So we're looking for clear glass on our flux. And it's not even close to melting yet, or even getting to melt. And look at how red she's getting. The pipe's getting really discolored. I could try and slow it down. But what's happening is the pipe's getting annealed and it's going to be very brittle right there. And now it's just now starting to get to the liquid point of the solder, but we're almost to the melting point of the steel. It just takes a really long time with the turbo torch. This could happen on a cold day too with brazing, regular brazing. See how it's carburizing that pipe. It's getting way too hot. It does work. But the problem now is the weld is stronger than both sides of the pipe right here. It's going to send a burst. That's about as good as that gets. So you can see the color difference in the heat. And actually Harris in their book puts a little example. That's just way too colored, way too discolored. They put an example in their book showing you when you anneal the joint, what happens. So if you take a look, they got a nice little book here. They show you 
in one of the parts of the book what, what could happen. Where is that part at? Uh, right here. So here's what we did. That's a good joint, but the edge of the pipe on either end could split out like that because it's been annealed. So it, it really can't hold the same pressure that it used to. You could use for two different metals uh, the same exact pipe. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll just clean one here. And if you use the flux, the flux will allow you to use the 8515 for steel to copper. And it actually looks pretty nice. So we'll put that in there like that. We'll heat it up. And it doesn't take that long because this has a lower melting point than the Nysil for it to heat up. because it's dirty. See how it just rolls right off? All right, with no flux, it won't stick. So without it being properly cleaned. All right, so that's it. Brazing with the three different solders. You got your 4555, your nice seal, and your 8515 that has phosphorus in it. So normally you don't use flux with it because the fluxing agent for copper to copper is the phosphorus. But when you're doing steel to copper, you are gonna need to use the white brazing flux. And it's also good for a tattletale. It tells you when your heat's getting ready, once you see it, do the popcorn action.